Welcome to the next video in our series explaining how to build your own Arduino quadcopter drone. In this video, we will explore how you can measure angles with the help of the MPU6050 gyroscope and accelerometer, which will subsequently be used to design a different type of flight controller. In the previous videos, we designed a flight controller to stabilize the quadcopter based on the rotation rates in degrees per second. This means that you give a rotation rate command to your radio transmitter. For example, if you move the stick and give it a pitch rate command of 10 degrees per second, the quadcopter will pitch 10 degrees each second. If you release the stick after 6 seconds, the pitch rotation rate command will fall back to 0 degrees per second, causing the pitch angle of the quadcopter to stop at 60 degrees. However, the quadcopter does not automatically go back to a level pitch angle of 0 degrees with this type of controller. For pilots, this type of controller is rather difficult because it does not stabilize the quadcopter to a level position when releasing the sticks. To go to such a controller, it is necessary to give an angle command. For example, when you give a 45 degree pitch command with the stick of the radio transmitter, the controller will cause the pitch angle of the quadcopter to go as quick as possible to 45 degrees. When you release the stick, the pitch angle command goes back to 0 degrees and the quadcopter's pitch angle goes back to 0 degrees as well. The controller, which gives you direct control over the roll and pitch angles of your quadcopter, is often called a stabilized mode controller, as opposed to a rate or acro mode controller. To build a stabilized mode controller, we first need to be able to measure angles correctly. A very simple approach to measure angles can be found by simply integrating the rotation rates to get the actual angle. Remember that k holds the number of the current iteration and ts is the iteration length, which is equal to 4 milliseconds in a 250 Hz loop. If you would discretize the integral for using the Arduino code, you would need to add the rotation rate multiplied by the iteration length to the angle of the previous iteration in order to get the angle of the current iteration. If that sounds too simple to be true, that's unfortunately because it is. This approach has two major problems. You keep dragging all measurement errors from previous iterations with you, causing the calculated angle to drift very fast. Another issue is a change of angles during a yaw movement. Suppose the quadcopter is flying with a constant pitch angle of 45 degrees. When you yaw around the z-axis without any pitch rotation rate around the y-axis, the pitch angle will nonetheless decrease or increase because the y-axis changes its direction as well. This is equally true for the roll rotation rate. That is why you need to use a totally different approach for measuring angles and for which you will use the accelerometer built in your MPU6050. As the name implies, the accelerometer measures the acceleration of the sensor along the x, y and z directions. From basic physics, you remember that we experience a gravitational acceleration anywhere on Earth and that this gravitational acceleration is equal to the gravitational constant, 1 g or 9.81 meters per square second. This means that when you let your MPU6050 sensor lie flat on a table without moving it, the measurement of the acceleration along the z direction or xz is equal to 1 g. The acceleration along the x and y axis will be zero in this case. Similarly, when you position the sensor such that one of the other axes lies perpendicular to the surface of the table, the corresponding acceleration is also equal to 1 g. Of course, any other direction not along one of the three main axes will result in a non-zero acceleration value for all three directions. Through some clever mathematical equations, this accelerometer property will enable you to calculate the exact roll and pitch angles of your quadcopter. Let's assume you roll around the x-axis until you reach the angle theta roll. To visualize this transformation, 
A box bounded by the X, Y and Z directions is sketched on the screen. From your basic trigonometry knowledge, you know that the tangent of the angle of a triangle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. In case of the angle theta rho, the length of the opposite side is equal to the acceleration in the y direction. The length of the adjacent side can be calculated by the Pythagoras rule, finally giving you the equation to calculate the roll angle from the accelerometer values. A similar strategy and reasoning can be applied for the pitch angles, giving you a second equation to calculate the pitch angle from the accelerometer values. And that's it! You are now able to calculate the roll and pitch angles from the accelerometer values. Now you need to transform this to a working code. For this part, you only need your TNC and MPU6050 and you can choose to test the code on a breadboard or directly on your assembled quadcopter. We will take the code from the gyroscope derived in parts 4 and 5 and add the necessary lines to read the accelerometer values. First, define the accelerometer and roll and pitch variables. Next, start a function that will extract the signals from the MPU6050 and switch on the low pass filter seen in project 4. Now you need to configure the accelerometer output. According to the MPU6050 register map, the accelerometer configuration settings are stored in register 1C. For this project, you will choose a full-scale range of 8G, which corresponds to a value for the AFS SCL setting of 2, or a 0 for bit 3 and a 1 for bit 4. The other bits can be set to 0, which gives a binary representation of 16 or a hexadecimal value of 10. The values of the accelerometer are located in the registers with hexadecimal numbers 3b to 40. Start writing to address 0 times 3b to indicate the first register and request 6 bytes from the address of the sensor, 0 times 68. The accelerometer measurements are spread out over 3 times 2 registers with each 8 bits. Repeat the same code for all accelerometer directions. Next, configure the gyroscope output as seen in part 4 and extract the rotation rates. To convert the accelerometer measurements from LSB to G, remember that you configured the AFS SCL setting to an LSB sensitivity of 4096 LSB per G. To get the measurements in G, just divide the measurement in LSB by 4096 LSB per G. At the start of this part, you learned how to calculate the roll and pitch angles from the accelerometer values. You can use these equations at this point, but take into account that the arctangents calculated by Arduino returns a result in radians, not in degrees. To convert the angles from radians to degrees, just divide the results by P divided by 180. Start the communication with the gyroscope as seen in part 4 and print the accelerometer values. Now upload the code by connecting the TNC to your computer and pressing the upload button in the Arduino IDE. Open the serial monitor and watch the acceleration measurements in the X, Y and Z directions on the screen. You will see that the acceleration in the Z direction is almost equal to 1G because the MPU6050 is lying flat on the table. Now tilt the sensor vertically in the Y direction. Notice that the acceleration in the Y direction becomes almost equal to 1, while the Z direction goes back to 0. Repeat this for the X direction. Calibration is once again necessary to correct these values, as they are not exactly equal to 1 in the different directions. This calibration needs to be done manually and will be different for each sensor. Just subtract or add the difference between the actual values of the accelerometer and 1 in lines 36 to 38 of the code and recheck that the acceleration values in all three directions are equal to 1G when tilting the MPU6050.
Now that you have calibrated the accelerometer, replace the lines in the loop parts of the code to print the roll and pitch angle and upload the code again. Instead of looking at the serial monitor, we will use the serial plotter to visualize the roll and pitch angles. First, you will roll the accelerometer in the positive direction up to an angle of 30 degrees. The accelerometer values are very responsive and very accurate. Repeat this movement and subsequently perform a two positive and one negative pitch movement as well. The results are excellent and very accurate. When the sensor is level again, the roll and pitch angles are nearing zero. However, a problem appears when the accelerometer experiences vibrations, which are inevitable when flying a quadcopter due to the presence and influence of the moving motors. Let's simulate these vibrations by hand. You will notice very sharp peaks and drops in the measured pitch and roll angles. Because the amplitude of these vibrations will increase a lot during flight, it is not feasible to build a good controller based on the accelerometer measurements because they are heavily disturbed by these vibrations. Integrating the rotation rates to obtain the angles is also possible and straightforward as we saw in the first part of this video. These rotation rate measurements are not sensible to vibrations. However, you get an ever-increasing error because you will add all measurement errors when integrating to obtain the angle. The graph on the screen shows the measurements of the angle through rotation rate integration and accelerometer trigonometry for a stationary sensor and illustrates the ever-increasing error with rotation rate integration and the sensitivity to vibrations with accelerometer measurements. It is clear that the two methods of measuring and calculating angles are not suitable for a flight controller and that we will need a different solution. In the next video, I will show you how you can combine both measurements and get rid of their individual disadvantages by using a Kalman filter. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series and remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full code on GitHub. The manual which contains all explications is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.